Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Cost Death for MSI 2024 and G2 leading the series 1 and 0 thus far. We're diving back into the draft once again and no side changes or anything like that. And we'll see whether this draft is going to be different. And already, already the list is taken away oh. and the Varus going to be the response as far as that ban. They're not going to give Jackie Love that power pick. Remember that the Ash was banned in the previous game along with the Rumble. One of those two is not going to make it through this draft. Also curious to see what happens with the Oriana Poppy. Which one actually slips through the ban phase now? I'd imagine it's probably the Poppy, especially with the Kalista already taken off the board. But um, I think the Oriana for Caps has just been so good. I mean, Cream already was struggling against the Trist. I don't know what way you want to go, but they are. Okay, like going to let it through. They're fine giving Caps the, the Oriana. <laughs> I Mickey think with a wry smile. I think Cream... Um, Remy, he still has the Ari that he can always bring out as an answer potentially to the Poppy. But the Ash is going to be banned, so the Rumble going to be left open. And oh, it's Jackie okay. Love Straven. That I is mean, the audience erupts as they should do. The man, one of his signature champions. And it's against Sansama, who's what? also it's one of his oh, favorites as well. Oh, and the Cosmo comes down once again. What? We the, did see the Kog'Maw already, it but it was with awful. a Renata. That's yes. what I hated about yeah. it. <laughs> I kind of like the idea of going back to I this mean, Kog'Maw Braum that year, they have really enjoyed. Last year at Worlds is the last time we also saw yeah. this prior to this tournament, but this was something that they brought out domestically at times. I, I don't know how I feel about it yet. Let's wait to see what the rest of the draft looks like as Top Esports is hovering the Corky for Cream. Yeah, I mean, especially when the Draven was something that Gen G struggled against into Top Esports. Jackie Love was able to have a great performance, so now I'm just super interested to see how they're going to try and plan out. But Corky, taking, is it going to be the Oriana or do you just go back towards the Tristana again here for Caps and keep what worked for you as G2? I actually kind of like the idea of going back towards the Tristana, but Nautilus going to be locked in alongside the Draven, something that uh, Mako has been pretty good at in the past, or oh. we're considering something else. Of course, both Yike and Tien finding a fair bit of success with the Jarvan, and Jarvan will be locked in for Tien this time around. A different bit of a Demacian flavor in the jungle. I do think it's a good shout because the Kog'Maw are going to be quite immobile. If you can actually almost sacrifice yourself as the Jarvan in the later fights prevent the Kog'Maw from getting in, to the equation, it's going to work out pretty well for top esports. It's just a case of now, do you go for the Oriana and have double immobile carries, or do you go back towards the Tristana, which I think is the right call, just giving yourself some mobility so both of your carries can't be locked up. I mean, Ivan has to be banned, right? Yeah, I mean, because yeah. this is... They have to choose a tree in banner. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and that's what's going to have to happen yeah, here. I wonder right. whether the Lilia priority will still stay high here uh, for top esports as well, because that was their first ban uh, in the second round last time. Wow, well, let's see what G2 choose to take away. Support still up. I don't think they have to be concerned about a Nautilus ban, given that they've got Braun. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Rumble, I think, makes sense. They were already scared about it after game one. They banned it in the first rotation. This time, they're moving it to the second. I'm wondering, is Renata something? There's the Ivan ban that we were talking about. But uh, Renata is a possibility. Uh, Rakan, maybe? Yeah, I don't think you're particularly worried about any support, to be honest. I think that's kind of the nice thing about Prop. Unless you're looking at, like, some sort of enchanter, but Draven with Lulu, enchanter yeah. doesn't really work. Draven so. Zyra sounds like it'd do all right. <laughs> oh, that's an old school one. <laughs> yeah. But that's I think you're in a pretty good spot here as G2, so I wouldn't be surprised to see top esports just continue. How crazy is it that every game to uh, G2 somehow draw a new band? You yeah. know, like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, has Ivan, like, Ivan's ban percentage just shot up significantly uh, just because it's now been played in a single game. But I think that's always the beauty of G2 at International is that they're willing to bring out these more abstract picks and make sure that they're able to work in different scenarios and they will find ways to make them work. But what will work now for G2? I mean, it's is it like Lillian? a Maokai, right? Maokai, I feel like, yeah. yeah. Your, your engage is a little bit limited, but still, Maokai ultimate is really good. Your siege is still really strong. You've got scaling elements on your side. I mean, I like Corky Jarvan from the side of Top Esports. Maybe they want a little bit more dive. Let's see what direction they go with next. This is, of course, one of Yike's favorites oh. as well. The Rex side to be locked in here. And not giving away too much as far as what this composition is going to look like in the end, but just still waiting on Broken Blade's Sante. pick. Very Surprise. surprised. Wow, yeah. Is this <laughs> the seventh game uh, for 369 on Cassante so far this tournament? I think it might be. Uh, definitely has been favoring him quite a lot. Uh, but the thing is, we've already seen BB has answers into it. Got the Camille, the Twisted Fate was not picked up in the last one. You still have a lot of answers, and 
at the moment, Yike has the control that you want in the early stages with this Rek'Sai to be able to interrupt, to cause a lot of backline threats. So I think you're relatively happy here as G2 if you want to go for a Camille with the double dive or even just have a more kite back comp with these long range rapid fire cannon TF stuns to enable the fight for you. Does, forgive my ignorance, but does uh, Renata ultimate get blocked by Braum E or does it just go over it? Ooh. I think it goes over it, as far as I know. Because I'm not sure. To I'm be not truthfully. sure either. I mean, I hope we'll get to see the interaction. Um, but I, I was wondering to myself, why wouldn't G2 want to ban the Renata? And maybe it's because they think against the shield wall it would be fine. But the Twisted Fate going to come out. So again, G2 going with a multi-carry a threat uh, approach. Funnily enough, coming into this tournament, the team that I would associate this playstyle with was T1. They were the type of team that would yeah. always like draft multiple carry lanes, always have multiple threats on the map and multiple win conditions. And G2 taking a similar approach, the second game in a row that Broken Blade is being given a carry. Last game he was a little isolated, but at the end of the game he had done the most damage in the whole game. He was a menace. And G2 are now once again going to have these side lane threat options. Tristana, a good split pusher. Twisted Fate, a good split pusher. They're front to back, I think, weaker than what we saw in the previous game. But uh, Top Esports, I think, with a lot more dive on their side. Again, with a very similar front to back approach, though. I do like the non-committal engage that you have perhaps from G2, though, where you can play for long range rapid fire gold cards. You can try and fish for a little bit of damage coming through. And as a top esports, you have to kind of all in if you want to get the real value from your composition. So jumping into the Rek side, jumping into the Braum, is actually going to make things a little bit more difficult for top esports. A very different look in both of the sides of the draft. Going into game number two, we'll see whose adaptation is going to reign supreme. I think most of the uh, MSI audience here right now are looking at Jackie Loves Draven, thinking that that might be <laughs> the ticket to an even series. The G2, I do like the, like, the amount of enable Mickey that they have in this composition <laughs> is absurd. And we know that Mickey is just going to go in as often as he can. Engage from, we hate it as uh, LCK commentators. We've seen it attempted many times, but I kind of don't mind the vibe. Because here we are, under the rift for game number two. Top Esports once again on the blue side. Now looking to change how this one's going to go. Cream looked great on the Corky in their series against Gen G. We'll see whether once again that is going to be the case. Is already getting a bit of that first strike value. You can see the crowd naturally incredibly enthusiastic. There are a lot of G2 supporters in this arena, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> and we've had already, we were just chilling in the break, and we had like a bunch of different fans coming up like, G2 3-0. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yep. not what I was expecting, no. but OK, <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so the, the crowd is incredibly excited for all of the plays that are happening today. Minions we're gearing up for a banger. I'm excited to see what Top Esports can do. Gen G found a way to handle Jackie Loves Draven. Hang on. Well, see whether this is going to be the answer. And I think running away from it is a good idea at this point in time, as Mickey already down to 50%. Aunt Summer has pressed W, but that's all he's really able to do. That is going to be a great trade to start things off here. And Top Esports feeling good about how that bottom lane has started. Yeah, the fact you already have the Braum low and had to burn a pod is going to be massive. Even uh, Mako getting that ward into spot exactly where Yike is going. It is responded on the opposite side thanks to Cap. So going to be a lot of information as to what junglers are up to in the early stages of this game. Now, the last time we saw Han Summer bring out this Cogmore, it uh, didn't work out against T1. It was game four and basically G2 had no early game options at all. They slowly bled out. They lost all of the early objectives. And as you can see in this bot lane two versus two, it's already going in the favor of Top Well, as you would expect, double range matchup into more of a scaling defensive bot lane matchup. But Top Esports are going to be eyeing up potential dives. They're going to be looking to stack up waves, early level two, early level three, into a bot lane threat dive potential. And it's something that G2 is going to have to respect and look to play around. And bear in mind that Yike is pathing towards his top side. He started his bot side camp, so I'm really curious as to if Top Esports will do anything in the early game to try and punish this Cogmore pick. I think as the game goes on, it will get slightly easier, because I think Caps having as much control in the mid lane as Tristana can lead to him leading to them off. But 369 already not coming out in the favorable side of these trades on the top side is BB getting a good amount of damage there. Yeah, it looked a little bit dicey for a second there, but uh, BB able to uh, find the gold card just in the nick of time. Big wave stacked up here towards the bottom side. Not looking like there is too much of a dive coming in here, though, as Yike on vision 
He's spending, that one from Mako, pretty good ward. He's spending a lot of time just covering for a potential bot dive. This wave is going to be thin enough that the bot lane of G2 aren't that concerned anymore, which is why he can feel safe going back. But you now look at the, the camp discrepancy that's starting to come through. Actually, I say that, Tien actually completely skipped his walls, getting over towards the red buff first. They're stacking up another wave now, still only level two. They need that level three to increase their chances of surviving the dive. Well, Mickey puts up the door as Tien Getting some information here. Know exactly what's going on. Does G2 we'll see whether they can actually survive this one already? Hansama, some decent damage coming down as the Void News comes on through there. Great flash to avoid the flag and dragon. Now Mako, he's not going to get bailed out from this one. And Mickey's diving forward. Caps, he's going to get interrupted though. Can't find the rocket jump in. Still Tian, he's going to get stunned. Manages to get out with the flag and dragon. They're going to keep him alive. It's a, it's a double kill for the Cogmo. And Hansama once again picking up first blood and getting across the line in the bottom lane. The unbreakable with the base on towards the dive. Means that they're able to turn that around. That's two kills now. Yike, covering mid. Caps is here though. Cream just wants to try and push him out of lane. G2 do everything perfectly. It's absolutely insane. I, I can't believe what I had. <laughs> The fact that Yike even caught the mid wave to make sure the Caps doesn't lose anything. Mickey's trying to clear the minions as quickly as possible. A good flash from Hans. Mickey is holding on to the shield for as long as possible. Mako oversteps, and then look, the shield comes out right now. Once the flash is committed, Mickey doesn't lose his life. Tian has now overcommitted, and then the double flash in from Hans and Caps means that they get the double kill. Jackie Love now with no summoner spells means that G2 have a 1k gold lead already. And the fact that you get to accelerate this Kog'Maw with four kills is oh, Caps it is, has Mickey. It's still going. Winter's Bite is not going to connect, but that is still a flash down, down on the core. And G2, once again, just dominating in this early game. It's a thousand gold lead. That is decent, especially when you've got a Cogmore comp composition. And you haven't had to even get Yike involved. Yike actually just gets to get ahead because he went topside, cleared out his camps. Whereas, as Vedi was talking about, you saw the Raptors and the Wolves oh, skipped by TM. Look at him again. Now Yike said, oh, not involved. Well, I'm back this yeah, time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's so many spells. I like it. <laughs> and the wave is naturally pushing towards them. They're going to play the long game. He's managed to sneak into this ward as well. We'll make a read the play. Jackie does have cleanse. That's not going to work when uh, the Rek'Sai is unborrowing. Does manage to get the knockup onto Jackie Love. Is now Mickey just in the front line, puts up the door. Jackie Love going to be able to cleanse that one, but that is no summoner spells left remaining for the Draven. They really want to kill him, though. Getting rid of those stacks is huge here because Jackie Love remains a win condition while he stays alive in this game. His caps is going to get a decent trade onto the Corky in the mid lane. And in the meantime, You've got an all-out getting a flash here for 369. Broken, Feeling strong in the top lane. Yeah, Broken Blade being forced to play on the weak side is struggling a little bit in the 1v1, but that doesn't matter. In terms of gold, he's still staying very even. Tian makes his presence stone on the bot side of the map once again. Clears out the vision as Yike is forced to clear out his top side camps, but he's going to be able to path back towards bot. Remember that the grubs are now still available. I'm sure G2 would love to get them, and as I say that, screw the camps. Yike makes a beeline towards those grubs. Yeah, they really want to try and get the grubs, but I think we, they still need to try and kill Jackie Love. Although we've got the Summoner's Files out from Jackie Love, Top Esports can still find that one kill, get all those stacks, and suddenly Jackie Love is an absolute menace once more. So, although G2 have some control on the bottom side, they're not quite out of the woodwork just yet. 124 adoration stacks already for Jackie Love, as Yike is going to secure the third grub. Yeah, we'll be able to, to take it? that one down. Burrows his oh, way out. Oh, Destiny He's going has back Yike in. says, all right, I'm coming back in again. But hang on, the bot lane of Top Esports is here. Yeah, that is going to mean that at least they're not able to go aggressive onto TN. I don't think it is going to mean it's going to be too much of a fight. As the Scryer's Bloom spots out where this bottom lane are. So, Mickey going to be Caps' support for a moment as the bottom lane once again going to head back down. There. So, we get a breather. Yeah. Uh, in, a, in a tense moment, and we think back to when Top Esports played against Gen G. And, and again, when we think back to those early games in the series, Jackie Love made life so difficult for Gen G. He would get so strong as Caps. Uh, not going to get hit by that rocket, careful. but that could have been really, really <laughs> bad if he did. Caps is really feeling it today. <laughs> but um, Gen G kind of did their homework. They looked back at that series, and they came into this series today, and they were like, okay, so we're just going to try and make Jackie Love as miserable as possible. And we think back to the BLG final against them as well. Elk and On working with Shun to just perma-dive that bot lane. G2 understood their assignment well, as Caps. 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 Caps.
just wasn't able to use it while he was dead. As in the meantime, here on this bottom side of the map, Hansama with that W running, doing a fair bit of work here. There's the stun, the living artillery. Is the bailout going to come through? No, it's not. And once again, the top esports bottom lane are losing to Mickey X and Hansama, and they are looking for even more. There's the stun, the living artillery through again, and the minions not going to take down the Cogmaw. So the bot lane for G2 looks at Caps and says, all right, look, don't worry, we've got this, lad. We're going to bring it back, but this is All been... of my notes are on the wrong side. <laughs> but this is the thing, like, the Kog'Maw Braum was the pick for G2 for so long. This is what they played with last year over the course of winter, perfecting this kind of late game scaling, but the threat in the early game has been huge. But now Broken Blade will have to pay the price. Yeah, Tien back up here once again as 369 closes the gap. There's the all-out pushes, Broken Blade against the wall, and he'll get knocked up and taken down. 369 grabbing a kill there as Caps continuing to do battle with this Gorky in the mid lane. <laughs> Well, a little bit more apprehensive now. Top Esports doing what they can on the map, which is find a punish on top. We look back at this 1v1. So already Caps is at a health disadvantage. Cream sees a window to fight, and Caps says, oh, I can just jump over this. No, no, you can't, good sir. But we look back at this bot lane two versus two. Level six for Han Sama, and Mickey says, you know what, we can actually fight this. He mitigates so much of the damage with the shield. The heal comes out from Jackie Love. But because of that Q connecting from Mickey, my god, Mickey. Yeah. He received so much criticism in summer for his play. But he is having an incredible tournament. And against top esports, he is absolutely popping off. But it's been back to comfort for Mickey, right? You're like going towards picks that we wouldn't traditionally see the Poppy, the Leona, the Braum. Now Comfort. making it work. I think it went in the kitchen and said, guys, I've been cooking. <laughs> I think that's his comfort. <laughs> that I think that's what Dagda meant. Yeah. <laughs> his comfort is in the kitchen. And it's uh, it's looking absolutely fantastic. As okay, Golka gonna connect onto 369 here on the top side. Has his Merc Treads, definitely uh, the big one into the Twisted Fate. It's Broken Blade continuing to have shove, of course. Uh, is uh, the Twisted Fate in this lane, so he's gonna be feeling pretty happy as Mickey finds Mako. Cream also here, but he really wants to kill this board, and he will be able to do so. <laughs> handshake on that. Nice handshake from Mako there. Um, Dragon's still yet to be taken, 10 minutes into the game. Very late, very delayed. Typically, we try and see these cross maps as a TP comes into top lane, but shouldn't really result in a huge amount. Oh, yikes. Ah, still going aggressive here as the gold card should be out of connect, but thankfully, the flag and drag was already there for Tien. He makes it out. You can see Caps has started to lean up towards top side, so that's why G2 were like, hang on a second, we can maybe make this work. Now Cream going to TP back into mid, so Caps, we just clear the wave for the likely reset and look for the uh, the TP back in himself, because if you give this much control towards Cream in the mid lane, I think t top esports will immediately start to look at Dragon, although Dragon Love and Mako going for a reset themselves. Again, we, we think of Cream as this assassin player, right? Uh, he's very well known for his Akali, of course. We've seen him have fantastic performances on the RE as well, but against Gen.G, it was his Tristana and his Corky that won them yeah. games. <laughs> and so they wanted to have something a little bit more safe in this, like, I say more safe than an Azir. It's probably a poor choice of words, but so far in this lane matchup, he is doing very well. The Grubs have been started off by top esports. They brought their bot lane up to try and fight. Hans is also on his way, but I think G2 is going to be a little too late to the party. Yeah, going to be slightly too late. Quincy's rage blade was picked up by Hans Hammer, so G2 would love to try and start something. Not going to be the case. Instead, they push out mid, and imagine we'll move over towards Dragon. Exactly, Dacta. I imagine the cross map will come through. Now, Cream with the package does mean that if Top Esports really want to, they can look to try and fight this. Tian looks like he's heading towards the Grom, so it would surprise me if they actually do. Instead, I think the safer play is to just secure that objective and uh, make the trade happen. Yeah, also a bit surprising that you get to use your package on the first Dragon. Um, because this <laughs> Dragon took so, such a long time to actually uh, be taken down, and he will have that one available still. G2 with control of the bottom side river. Let's see whether Cream can actually get in there and utilize the package to get something done. Yeah, there could be an argument to leave that package until the Rift Herald in two minutes' time, but just trying to keep it in sync with the Dragons is... Well, there is that package that we were talking about. Rocket Jump does get through as there's the gate. Interrupted by Tien, and now Broken Blade, he's gonna have to flash if he wants to make it out of this one. He does so, uses the Ghost as well, so he'll survive. Yike takes the Dragon, and there was something about to happen in the mid lane, but with the fact that that gate was not allowed, that is going to mean that Cream will be just fine. Top Esports are putting a lot of resources into the top side of the map, and traditionally I'd be like, oh, well, Cassante getting strong is gonna do a lot, but when you're up against a Tristana and a Kog'Maw, this percentage health damage, especially from the Kog'Maw, is gonna be really tough for this Cassante to deal with. Well, more aggression here towards the bottom side of the map. Could be a dive opportunity as 
The Glacial Fissure does not find its mark. There's the Flash knockup though as Jackie Love flashes, get himself out of the way. The bailout comes on through and he's not going to survive through it. Tien now having to flash, but it's not going to work out for him either because he's just between a rock, a hard place, and then dead. Yike now under the turret and it's a triple for Hardplace. 6 0 1 on the Cogmore. Cream, I don't think he's going to be able to do anything here, and this turret should be in the dust too. This is a Cogmore player's dream. You go up against a Draven and you somehow come out of lane two and a half thousand gold ahead of them. This, this Cogmore is massive. How the hell do you stop him? And I remember, because I watched the last time Hans played this Cogmore, I was <laughs> with Dracos, and he was like, no. Just wait for two items. I, I don't have to wait for two items now. They're almost there. I'm going to be really honest. I have this image in my head of Hans looking Jackie Love in the eye and saying, say LDR again. <laughs> 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 Look at the dive. The flash from Yike knocks up and the chains is here on the Jackie Love. He tries to flash away, but the da damage is too good. A great ultimate from Mako, but unfortunately they can't quite get the execute onto Mickey to allow for him to revive and turn the fight around. Caps is able to rotate over first. He then works with his team to secure the kill. He takes the tower aggro and it's Han Sama that cleans up with a triple. It's just great turret aggro. Dunk, yeah, man. the juggling was the incredible. Time. And now you get to move Caps up towards top side. It's Rift Tower to spawn. You have Han Sama, as you already pointed out, nearly at two items. G2, just get to move over and take that. And this is where I was saying, like, Cream maybe could have kept the uh, the package for this Rift Herald fight, but without that package and Jackie Love being 0 2, it doesn't really feel like you have a, a real threat when you go over towards this Rift Herald. It could have almost been worth uh, to actually try and put some pressure on the Dragon as well, given the fact that it was so incredibly late, you can then play around it, but wasn't something they opted into. Tien actually moving towards the top side instead. But maybe miscommunication, something like that, just not quite finding what they needed to. It's now Broken Blade with no flash. I think should be going down here as 269 gets over the Cataclysm wall. And there it is. So the Twisted Fate down once again. They'll trade it for a Rift Herald though, and maybe some more here towards the top side. Glacial Fissure gonna be avoided nicely with the Valkyrie from Cream, who does still have to flash to get himself out of the way. Mickey in a bit of trouble now as Yike from the side. This one's a dicey dive, though, if they do want to go for it, and I don't think they will. I mean, Top Esports is trying to get what they can on the cross map. They're able to push out bot. TP is available onto 369. He is going to invest it into top lane. And now G2 have to respect... Oh, no, actually, it's Cream. My apologies. Just immediately coming back after getting that health bar but back up and available. Ultimately, like, Top Esports recognize that there's nothing they can do bot, so they're trying their best to shut Broken Blade down. They really have done a great job. 369 in the laning phase has been outperforming Broken Blade so far in this series. While Broken Blade could bounce back in the previous game, his passive is not enough in this game to be able to close that gold gap. And it comes back to the question of how big of a problem will this Cassante be? I would argue that Cassante, as difficult as the champion it's been so far at MSI, against a good dog? I, I don't know, I kind of... I, <laughs> is Cassante two and a half thousand gold worth of a problem? <laughs> I mean, I also, Hans Summit is the goodest of dogs right he now. He is very I, good. He's a good boy. He's doing a great job. If only he was actually playing Cogmore. <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't matter. I'm going to give him treats anyway. But we <laughs> have Corgi Corgi. We could have had Corgi Corgi and Cogmore. Oh, we it could been have. the best. The lore is ruined. Dragon Instead, he <laughs> needs to go base skin Cogmore. The champion seconds. with some of the best skins in the game. <laughs> Alright, well, Mako could be in trouble here. Winter's Bite going to connect. Puts up the door. There's the stun. And look oh, at these 80 oh, carries. Oh. They just wail on him. And Mako did not stand a chance. I now the Rift Herald comes down to the mid lane. That should be this turret going down as well. And G2's lead is only going to further extend as top esports. I think they'll be lucky to defend their inner turret here off the back of this one. As Mickey X, he wants even more. Not going to find the Glacial Fissure once again, though, as Yike will be interrupted. Still, they're not going to go for a re-engage, missing their support. Yeah, I do love the immediate just, sorry, coming through from Yike as <laughs> yeah. the, the Rift Out disappears and he feels significantly less threatening. But overall, I mean, G2, they get the mid lane tower. Yes, you get a push for 369 on the bottom side, but I don't think it really matters. The only thing is G2 may be looking for a reset for Blade of the Rune King coming through for the Kog'Maw right before they start to go towards Dragon. 1.8k gold in his back pocket. Yeah, uh, and he's that gonna is... buy a blade. <laughs> so Blade of the Rune King and Ginsu's both completed here at 17 minutes. That's uh that's a pretty quick uh two item spike to come in for the Cogmore. Not gonna be able to get them a Drake though, because he was back in the shop with Boris. And so the Ocean Drake will be secured. It's a mountain soul this game as well. And if Top Esports can take some control back, I'm looking at Cassante and I'm thinking if there are three mountain drakes as well, I don't think the 369 will ever die.
I don't know if we're going to get to that stage, though, because with the way that it's positioned now, G2, you're basically moving Mickey back and forth between mid and bot to make sure this package doesn't get value, and it won't. Well, it is going to be used underneath this turn as Destiny comes on forward. Cream is really dead, guys. Super duper dead. And I think it's desperation oh, from Top Oh, no, Esports. and there's the old forward as well from Yike. As Jackie Love, he's going to have to flash. That's oh. not going to save him, though. Gold card comes in, and it's another double for Han Sama. Caps on the top side of the map trying to deal with this massively fed Kasase. He's got the ghost, and he will get the flash out of Caps. 369. He's in. Oh, that's Whoa. a teleport. He just needs to get himself yeah, out of there, I think, is out. the situation. Yeah, he realizes the collapse is happening. He sees more farm bot lane. 369 oh, like is pretty much the only threat on the side of top esports as G2 punish what was a huge mistake from Cream. He sees that the pack is about to run out. I don't even think he wanted to commit. I think he just wanted to chip down onto Han Summer's HP, and he did not respect Broken Blade's collapse enough as he ends up losing his life. And that's why I love the way that Mickey played that setup on the bottom side. They were trying to highlight Mickey leans into bot to make sure BB can clear out the wave so that then if this package gets used in mid, you can bring Broken Blade across. And it's G2 protecting both sides of the map and then immediately been able to pick off Cream as he, it just was desperation. He wanted to get some value from his package, especially since he used it twice already. But it only leads to two more kills going the way of this Kog'Maw. And yeah. more Adoration stacks just lying in the dirt. It's 0-3-0 zero, zero for Jackie Love on his Draven. It's just not working out here as Top Esports just standing there in a bit of a triangle. It confused me a lot. I mean, I, I, I will say that if anyone claims that they expected Hans and Mickey to be bodying this bot lane, no. <laughs> they would be a liar. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they have, uh, Hans, Summer, and Mickey have, have pleasantly surprised many with how they've been playing this two versus two. And uh, G2 are going to be more than happy for it, especially given how much criticism Hans Summer has been receiving over the last few days. But again, the game still long, still a lot left to go. And G2, with only a 4k gold lead while they're in a great position, still need to close this out. We think back to the previous game. Top Esports punished the Baron of G2. And if the gold gap hadn't been as big as it was, that could have been a turnaround fight. We know how resilient Top Esports is, and you've always got to be cautious of their ability to fight their way back into games. The thing that I really like about the state of the game for G2 right now is, though, is their 1 3 1 is well and truly in effect. They've got two of the greatest champions for side lane play in the Twisted Fate and the Tristana. And so they just need to make sure that top esports don't take Baron themselves and they will just generally win. 369 is making part of that ineffective, though, because of how strong he is. He is very Going strong. against Caps, going up against BB is fine, but I like what. G2 are doing, they know that 369 doesn't have the teleport, so they are like, right, if we just hover in around the uh, vision control that we've set up in Baron area, 369 has to roam. Great, that opens up Caps to now pushing on the bottom side, so I feel top esports may actually just start up this Baron to try and get Caps to join them in this area. Well, Caps already moving towards that mid lane, as we could see, but no, decides against it. He's going to try and take down this outer turret, continue the pressure for G2 as Jackie Love will push this wave into the outer turret in mid. Finally, a Glacial Fissure is going to land onto Jackie Love, and there are the stacks. Yike comes in, finds the Pre-Seeker, and there is the ulti to finish it off. And Jackie Love can't catch a break this game. Misstep after misstep from top esports over extensions in G2 is incredibly quick to punish. Also, does Mickey have a homing beacon on this queue? Because this man does yeah. not miss. I was gonna say, I didn't know him. Brahma's an engaged champion. This guy well, is not. Be blind yeah. <laughs> I, I really hope that Kerry isn't watching this. He's not an engaged champion, okay? As top esports now looking to try and stop this Baron, but it's going down so incredibly fast. G2 looking for the turn. Destiny does come on through as there is Mickey taking down 369. The Biggest threat on the team is Tien. I'm not sure about that cataclysm, but he wants to try and deny a Baron. He takes forever to go down, but he will be taken out in the end. The Baron secured. The Whirling Death does absolutely nothing, and G2 will not be stopped. Even Cream is trying to get into the middle of the Baron pit to steal away something, but G2, they're cool, they're calm, they're collected. The dog is spitting all over Top <laughs> Esports, and there's nothing that they can do about it. Game two in a series against Top Esports and G2 are dominating in clean fashion. An expectation that is being defied. Jackie Love, he can't kill that last minion in time. And Mickey, that's all he needs. That is the bridge for his engage. Yikes says, you know what, Hans, you've got enough. I'll take this one. Let's balance the scores out a little bit as it sets up for the Baron. 10-0-4 on this Cogmore. 
Um, and I've always thought of Cogmore as one of those more scaling champions that does a lot of damage <laughs> in the late game. Apparently that's not how it is. Uh, you just kind of slaughter everyone all the time. And 2-0-12 for Mickey. 100% kill participation for this bot lane. An incredible glow up. Battle series. <laughs> you know what's going well when your support is the same amount of items as your mid laner. You know, that's <laughs> you know. The game is in a great spot. Uh, it's it's crazy. I am dumbfounded right now at the level of play we're seeing from G2. And it's a completely different draft. Outside of the Tristana, it's a completely different draft from what we saw in game number one. But it's this still a very similar shellacking coming on through here as they're now pushing on this inhibitor turret towards the bottom side. Cream trying to do what he can. The Glacial Fissure goes wide. They do try and get themselves out of there. That is a turret going down on the top side, but it means that Cassante isn't here. The most important member of this team. He's now going to have to look for a back angle to try and save this inhibitor, but it's not going to work out. This is definitely dead, but can G2 get more is the question. Mid lane inhibitor turret has been set up as the flash forward from Mickey once again gets the package onto Jackie Love. He blocks the whirling death as well, and now G2 are looking to get themselves out. They'll burrow, they'll rocket jump, and they'll be just fine as Tien looking for his opportunity let's see whether he can find at least a target to try and focus on but cream's already down to 50 percent the buster shot too good from caps oh has been placed massive damage to come out here and the cogmore is spitting mad onto top esports this might just be it jackie Lop just explodes and mickey he's immortal five alive for g2 Five dead on the side of Top Esports. Just like that, 24 minutes, 30 seconds, G2 will wipe out Top Esports. What was that? What an incredible team fight from G2. 12-0-7. If there's ever a way to silence the doubt as Hans Summit, that is the best way you can do it. Utter domination from G2 in game two. And as long as they don't get complacent, I, I mean, I know as a, as a member of a different region, um, you can go up 2-0 against top esports and still have to be a little bit worried. I think if G2 continue to play like this, it's a 3-0. Three, three <laughs> what? I mean, I, I'm, I'm just as surprised as you are. Uh, a former and knockup from Yike to round things out. It feels like the only player struggling today is Broken Blade, but even then, it's not really amounting into much. He comes back into the later team fight, still finds value. So impressive stuff from G2. Can they close things out as they bring us the match point? That's all I'll have to find out. But if you're nostalgic for Heart Steel and New Jeans from Worlds 2023, uh, check out Grind of Glory, a short behind the scenes documentary on how the 2023 Worlds opening ceremony presented by MasterCard was brought to life. It's actually fantastic. I definitely highly recommend it. You can scan the QR code on screen or head over to Lolly Sports at their YouTube page. Now it is time to throw it over to the analyst desk to break that one down. Sharks? Aphia? Aphia? Are we... Hello? <laughs> we're not... We're not... Okay. Uh, let's, let's get started, shall we? Yeah, we don't so, want to jinx anything. 2-0. Yeah. It for is 2-0. Two. Two and honestly, for me, so much of this G2 run is impressive to me with their drafting. Because we've had so many conversations like, how, how will they ever overcome the raw number of players, the amount of competition the LPL and LCK has? And they have so many picks that they've won with that nobody else is winning with. And that's what I like here is that not only they play the meta pick and especially the bot lane meta pick that shoots them so well, the Kalista driver and everything like this, but they're also staying creative here. And it feels like TES got caught off guard here. Twice in a row. And the big thing here for me is that they very clearly expected the Varus, right? So they immediately have the Ivan response ready. They have the Leon yeah, in already. Game one. In game one. And then the follow up here, you know Jackie is going to love Draven if it's not banned. And immediately the Cog Brown follows. And let's uh, talk about how that bot lane went every second counts. And it, it definitely counts thanks to the reliable Cisco network when you're just a little bit too late to the play in that bot lane. Absolutely. I mean, the fact that the early dives failed here, G2 decides to make a dive work of their own. They already have the Rage Blade on the Kog'Maw 
and just watch the way they manage the turret aggro. They never let Jackie get any of his cash in this entire game. There is also a little bit of story here for everyone. There is Yike being at the right place at the right time. There's Caps already ahead on the roam, and there is the lead that Hans and Mickey were able to get right from the get-go. And you can feel like they've been doing their homework well, because when you think of G2 in the early game in the previous series they played, they needed to adjust, especially coming into TS's bot lane, because do you know, this is when they're going to be aggressive. A couple misplays on the TS side, but I do feel like the way G2 approached the early game here with the over-aggression has been phenomenal for them. It has been, um, and that bot lane has been all we have talked about and all we have been watching, and I think that is all the more impressive when we look at what we talked about after the T1 series. And I would go further. I'd say after the Energy series at Worlds, because there were so many people that wanted Hans, to me when I was reading, off the team. There were people that says, blow this G2 up. It's been too long. They're not going to run it back. But they have believed in themselves this entire time. Long. They trusted the players. They trusted the orgs to build on what has been a two-year process for this team, just readjusting how they approach international events. And it has come through being confident and displaying this confidence today. I don't want to say anything for the next game, but it's looking great so far. Yeah, I mean, we can only judge the games that we have seen, right? Mm -hmm. And that we can. But you're right, we also have to be realistic. Top Esports is still a world-class team that has played many, many best of fives in their lives. So uh, where does it start for Top Esports? And for a lot of the LEC fans, they'll remember the reverse sweep that Top was able to find. But it's important to remember that this TS roster, or rather TS as an org, and specifically TN and Jackie Love were also part of, say, that 2020 to TES roster that was unable to make it out of a group because they lost to GAM Esports, right? There are, I think for this org specifically, a lot of moments where it felt like they couldn't really step up the way it was expected of them. And if they end up losing here, it will be yet another example. There's so many props. Do we yeah. want to use any? We've got a lot. Han Sama's been crushing it. Yes. Jackie Love needs to step Oof. up. Yike Rexai, uh, big for me. 369 needs to roll. That's another three. Nope. Uh, oh. A nine. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, there is so much anxiety in the air. There's I actually feel it. It's so strong On either right side. Now. Because there have been reverse sweeps in the four. You don't want to believe it. If you base it on these two games, G2's been worlds better than TES. Yes, but uh, we have to go to break. Okay. I'm not Take taking this away. one. Take us away. <laughs> No, I, Jen, okay, I'll, I'll, you do the I'll honors. You do the honors. We'll, we'll uh, let them, we'll did let them start with two G2 wins. We don't know what's going to happen next. Make sure you tune in for game three to see if G2 can complete the sweep or if TES can get the reverse.
Red Bull gives you wings. Legends Ever Die, Rise, Gods, three of the four tracks in this year's opening ceremony were created and written by them. This is a bit of a celebration of the history of these anthems. We put so much into the songs and to like have them pop up in one ceremony like this is just great because it's it brings us back to where we were when we started. This is probably one of the sickest things I've ever seen. Can't get